Hello and welcome back folks. Today I'm going to convert an IHC heavyweight passenger car into a smooth runner with some replacement metal wheels, added weight, body mounted KD couplers, and a few other details. I picked up an 8 car Overland Limited set from a train store in my hometown in Florida around Christmas 2021 for about $70. I knew that these cars would need some upgrades and changes, but for less than $10 per car, I was plenty happy with the purchase. The wheels are plastic with those pizza cutter flanges, the cars are very lightweight, and the truck mounted couplers are prone to causing derailments. In this video I wanted to document what I've done to change these cars. Uh, this is by no means the best way to do this, there are a lot better ways to go about doing this. This is just what I've been doing with the skills I have and the resources I have at hand. And while these cars are not incredibly accurate to Union Pacific, the cars are a great stand-in and certainly look the part, which is really what I'm going for. The first thing I'm going to do is remove the trucks. These are held in place with a plastic pin, which will also be replaced with a screw. Once the trucks are off, I want to remove the roof. Six tabs on the chassis hold it in place and it's easy enough to pop off the roof and then put it to the side. After some coffee, I'm going to determine where I want the couplers mounted. I have a number 5 KD in a draft box that I've been using to determine the mounting location. I'm going to make the mounting pads out of styrene. This first piece is one millimeter thick. I'm going to determine how long I want that layer to be under the chassis. Long enough to support the draft box. Then I'm gonna use some super glue gel and then glue it in place. Next, I'm going to use this modeler's chisel from Micromark and carve off some of the rivet detail and plastic to get those beams on either side of that mounting pad more level with the pad itself. Most of the time, plastic carves off easily, but some of these cars, the plastic is brittle and chips instead. I'll mention more of this a little later. Next, I'm going to add an additional piece of thinner styrene on top of the piece we just glued down. This piece is 0.4 millimeters thick. These two pieces of styrene bring the coupler to the correct height on my KD coupler gauge, and I'll show that a little later on. I'm going to mark on these styrene mounting pads I've put under the chassis where I want the coupler to be mounted. I do notice that the top of the coupler hits the diaphragm, which could hinder operation. I'm going to trim and file the diaphragm at the bottom to allow for that extra clearance. If my cars rode higher, I would probably not have to do this, but since I'm lowering them, this is unfortunately a a change I must do. Using my flush cutters, I'm going to remove the bottom portion of the diaphragm and then file the edges. This might seem like a drastic way to alter these cars, but again, they were cheap. I'm not trying to win any awards with them. I just want to get them performing adequately while looking the part. I'm going to take a common nail and use this to make a small pilot hole for the draft box in the soft styrene plastic so I know where to drill for the screw. Using KD's 256 tap and die set, I'm going to tap the, for the mounting screw using my pin vise. Going through the styrene mounting pads and the floor of the car itself. I'm going to be using a half inch 256 nylon screw from KD, but you could use any 256 screw if it's long enough. After checking that the coupler swings freely, I'm going to turn my attention to the trucks. Now, IHC cars come with scale 31 inch plastic wheels. You can purchase metal wheel replacements for them that will fit right, but I find that they are much more expensive than I'm willing to pay, especially when I have six axles per car and eight cars. If you want proper scale wheels for heavyweights, you'll need 36 inch wheels, but doing that would require carving off the brake shoes on these trucks which is not something I wanted to do. I've tried these Intermountain 33 inch wheels and decided that I'd rather compromise a little bit on the appearance and uh, go with these. I mentioned earlier that the plastic can be brittle on these older cars, so I'm being cautious as I can removing the wheels. 
I'm also removing the horned hook coupler and some of the material supporting it using my flush cutters again. Here's a truck I've already removed the material from. I want the cars to ride a little lower, so I'm removing this raised ring from the truck. On some trucks, the plastic will just carve off with no issues. On this particular truck, the plastic is so brittle that when I use my flush cutters, the pieces fly off in chunks, which is less than ideal. Sandpaper or a flat file would be slower, but cleaner. I'm just going to use my file and smooth and flatten the area, and it should be fine. I'm going to replace the plastic pins that hold the trucks into the chassis with 632 and 2 8 inch screws. I'll use the nut and washers as well to mount the trucks. The main issue with the screw is that the head of the screw will contact the middle wheel, at least with the wheels I've chosen. I can feel the slightest amount of friction where I turn the middle wheel set. I'm going to use my trusty flat file to flatten the screw head some. This would probably be faster with a rotary tool, uh, but it really only takes a few seconds to remove enough material off of the head of the screw to flatten it some. Next I'm going to thread the screw into the chassis, but this is where I discover how brittle the plastic on this particular car is. The bolster on the chassis splits and breaks apart, and on every car I've done up to this point I haven't had this happen on this step. I removed some of the extra plastic like I did the truck, smoothing it down and flattening it out. And I've decided to use two washers to give the correct ride height instead of relying on the plastic. The broken and chipped plastic in this area doesn't look great, but I haven't seen it affect performance yet. Next I'll fit the nut inside the chassis and lightly tighten the screw until the truck can't turn. Then I back it out a quarter turn so the truck can swivel freely. Later on I'll put some blue Loctite on the screw threads in the future so that screw uh, doesn't come undone by itself. I'll repeat all of these same steps on that second truck including the washers for the bolster weight next. There's a few ways to do this, and you could use some old nuts and bolts, some people use pennies, some use BBs to fill in the pockets in the chassis on these cars, uh, but I like to use tire weights, uh, self-adhesive tire weights. Uh, these come in a half ounce or a quarter ounce sizes, they have an adhesive on the back, you can cut them to length. I buy these from Harbor Freight and use them on most of my rolling stock. I need to determine how many weights I'll need, so I'm going to weigh the car first. For a car of this length, going by the NMRA standard, it should be 6.5 ounces if I remember right. With four of these weights, it just about makes it. A fifth weight brings it closer to 7 ounces, and I'd rather be slightly underweight, uh, so I'm only going to use this strip of four weights. In the chassis floor are these mounting nubs. I'm pretty sure they are used to fit interiors to these cars, uh, when IHC had aftermarket interiors available. I'm not ever going to do that, so I'm going to remove these. Next I'm going to mount the weights, but first I'm going to cut this strip of weights in half and mount each pair closer to the trucks rather than have it all sitting in the middle. The weights are not super noticeable from the windows, but I want to make it harder to see them anyway, so I'm going to cover them with some Tamiya black paint just brushed on. You could paint the nut and screw as well, but I, I decided against doing so. Once the paint has dried, it really helps make it less obvious that there are chunks of steel in the interior. Now with the model weighted, new wheels added, new truck mounting hardware and couplers, let's check it against the old KD height gauge. I'm also interested in seeing how it couples up with a car I've already done, and the MT-73 that will be pulling these cars eventually. 
Yeah, it looks good. The last thing I have to do to this car is add some window shades. This is a detail I really like and it helps hide the lack of interior. If I take the roof off another coach that's been finished, you can see that I've just taken some of that thin styrene, completely unpainted, and just used a very thin application of PVA or Elmer's glue at the top edges uh, to make window shades. Some windows have shades wide open, some are closed, some are in between. I don't know what color they should be on a Union Pacific Heavyweight, but the plain white styrene itself seems just fine and honestly I like the look. Most of the cars in this set will get the same changes. However, two of the cars uh, are shorter and have trucks closer to the edge of the chassis, which will interfere with the standard coupler boxes if I mount them like I've done the others. These shorter cars will be getting KD252 draft boxes instead, which are meant to fit couplers in areas where there's less space. I already mounted some of these on the first coach that I did as a test, and I found that they allow for slightly more travel from side to side on the coupler, as well as uh, giving greater clearance for the trucks to swivel around as well. Another issue I've had, owing to the brittle plastic on some of the trucks, is this truck broke in three places and I've managed to epoxy it back together. Uh, but because of this, the spacing for the slots of the wheels is too wide. So with a little jostling, the wheels will just fall out if you pick the cars up. On 90% of the trucks I've, I've dealt with so far, the inner mountain wheel sets fit just fine. But on this one, uh, I've put a small piece of styrene uh, on where the wheels fit in so they don't just fall out when you pick the car up. Only one side of this truck has those extra pieces at the moment, and the other doesn't as this was mostly a test anyway. Honestly, if I come across another heavyweight at a train show for five bucks, I'll cannibalize it for the trucks. I know IHC made metal trucks as an upgrade, but they are not easy to find and are usually pretty expensive. It's odd, some of the cars are perfectly fine, but two or three are brittle and would probably shatter like a dinner plate if dropped from more than a foot off the ground. Even with the issues I have encountered, I do like this set of cars. I can't always justify $50 to $80 per passenger car, but for $8 and change per car, I'm fine with some of the issues and I'm learning a lot. And some might say you might as well spend the extra money that you're putting into these cars on new better cars, and I'd agree with that too. But I like working on this stuff. Plus, uh, Union Pacific heavyweights aren't exactly in vogue at the moment, so I'm working with what's available. I still have to mount couplers, and I'm waiting on an order of 148 whisker couplers and 256 screws as I've run out of both. I will also be touching up any of the styrene that was used as mounting pads with black paint to help hide them under the chassis. Some of the cars will be getting those window shades, uh, but not all of them. Uh, I've toyed with the idea of also adding working marker lamps to the observation car, but that's more than I care to do at the moment. And well, that's pretty much it. I wish I had enough cars with couplers to have the mountain pull and show you guys, but that will be another dedicated video, I think. And like I said, I don't think this is the best way to go about upgrading these cars. Uh, there's probably a lot better ways that are cleaner, but I'm having fun and I'm learning a lot of new techniques and how to go about problem solving with this sort of thing. And you know, if it, if it gets you interested in doing the same, then, then definitely go for it. These cars are, these cars should be cheap and easy to work on. Um, but that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.